Hi, my name is Peter Coker and I'm on the development team at Applied Computing and Engineering. This is a demo of a piece of software that we've created which we call Strusim. It brings computer integrated manufacturing to structural steel fabrication. As you can see I've got an ABB IRB2400L robot inverted underneath this four post frame and I've made the frame transparent so we can see what's going on more clearly. We've also created translators to bring in beams using either the DSTV format or the CIS2 format. In this case I'm going to bring in a DSTV file and we create 3D geometry to match what's in that specification. I'm going to select the part here and move it to the infeed table and as you can see here we can we allow the user to place the near side of the beam up, the far side up, or feed any configuration that they deem necessary. Now finally, the most powerful part of StruSim is in the program generation. With this button, and once we confirm that we're going to use a 260 amp torch, StruSim sorts features from front to back, plans all the material sensing that's going to need to be done so that any uh, unexpected material variances will be accounted for. And all of those paths, whether cutting, scribing, or touch sensing, are created in order, collision-free, without any singularities or joint limits. So we feed the conveyor so that the target areas in the workspace clamp the part, make a safe move so that the robot can get to its workspace easily and then perform each move. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so that we can see the front portion of the beam and instead of going in step-by-step -step mode I'm going to let the simulation run on its own. All of the cutting parameters such as kerf, uh, torch to material offset, uh, plasma pre pressures, voltage, current for the torch, those are all calculated from databases that are built into Strusim so that the TCP locations that we calculate are tailored to whatever material profile you're working with. Here you see that both the horizontal and vertical position of that flange are being identified and any offset vectors are then translated uh, they're stored during the measurement process and then applied to any cuts that are made where appropriate. I'm going to speed the simulation up a little bit so that we can proceed to the back end of the beam. And what you'll also notice here is that in addition to making these cuts like the flange thinning and the cope here, we're also marking the beam with a piece mark that's done at a lower voltage and current and the part is etched in such a way that even after it's painted or the assembly is painted the uh, the piece marks can be seen without having to use a grease pencil and and keep track of parts manually slow this down a little bit again as we approach the back end of the beam Once these final two flange holes are cut, the rest of the interesting features will be at the back end here. And then I'm just going to choose a view that allows us to see those a little bit more clearly. These are cut flange flush operations here. And once again, we, we make all necessary measurements so that if the beam is higher than expected, if the web is thinner or thicker, or if the flange is thinner or thicker than expected, or if the material is shift side to side, all that's compensated for uh, on a runtime basis in the ABB code that we generate. After this program is fully simulated, what we're going to do is we're going to take what looks like pseudocode here and we're going to translate it 
in a single step into code that can be executed immediately and without any uh, concerns, as I said, about singularities or joint limits directly into ABB code. Once this is complete, we've got code stored automatically here. And you can see that we've got, we declare our variables for touch offsets and for combinations of those vectors. We define the tool and further down, my video capture tool is not allowing me to scroll down right now, unfortunately. But all the plasma settings and cuts are performed as expected in a single program. There we go. So we make moves in joint space, we make moves in uh, linear moves, we've got material sensing commands here. And what we can do is simulate that code in ABB Robot Studio as well as, as I said, bring it straight to the ABB controller. If you want to learn more about what we do, you can visit our website at www.acel.us/strusim. Thanks for your time.